Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ian Golden and today I am really excited because I'm going to share something with you that has changed my DJ life a lot. And it's a technique that I've been using to organize my library and find important songs really fast that I've never shared with you before until today. One of the big problems with DJing is trying to find the right track to play really quickly because a lot of songs we play are short and we don't have a lot of time to think about it. And if you're searching through your library, looking for the next song, stressed out, pulling your hair out, things get really crazy really fast. Let me show you a simple way to solve that problem. First of all, in our DJ software, we typically have two different kinds of things that we can use to organize our music. We've got playlists, which are usually built in iTunes or some other music software organizing, or sometimes in your DJ software. And then we have crates. Sometimes these are the same, sometimes they're different. This is generally what people use to organize their music, crates or playlists. The problem with these is that they're fairly static and they're not dynamic. Smart playlists in iTunes is a powerful idea of a dynamic playlist that changes and grows and can easily be found. Let me show you how you can create a sort of smart playlist by using tags. Back in the day, good 15 years ago, I was playing more of an open format style of DJing, which required me to play this song. Classic, but a goodie. The problem with this song is that it was very difficult to mix in and out of because it's got this double time beat style that doesn't mix well with other tracks. You basically need another track that has a similar beat structure in order for it to match up. But it was really hard to quickly find songs like that. So what I did is I started putting a tag in the comments and that tag was quite simply, Hey Ya. Because this song is called Hey Ya, and I associate songs with this double time beat, here's another one with it. Uh. Yeah. Roughly the same BPM, but more importantly, uh. this song has that same backbeat. Because the snares are in the same place, these two songs would mix together. I could put them in a playlist, but that really limits my potential. And also if I were to do that for all the different combinations of things, I would create a lot of little playlists, which is super obnoxious. Instead, here's what I did. I put the words, hey ya, into the comment sections of all songs that would mix with Hey Ya. Pretty simple, it worked beautifully. I've got Hey Ya and here are all the songs back from about that period of time, 2004, 2005, and pretty much I could go through this list and pick, ah, okay, so I'm playing Hey Ya, uh, maybe tonight I wanna do Block Party. And the cool thing about this is this playlist is now dynamic. Anytime I add a new song to my collection that would mix well with Hey Ya, I would just add Hey Ya to the comments and boom, it's there in the list. Did this for many years, worked perfectly, started doing it with a few different things. But here's where the next innovation came. Fast forward like 10 years, we've got Twitter and hashtags. And hashtag is a really clever way to allow you to search for specific things. Let me give you an example. Let's say there's a song that's called Tribal or you wanna create a dynamic tribal playlist, okay? If I search for Tribal, I'm gonna get all kinds of things. Too many, in fact. But if I put hashtag Tribal, I'm only gonna get songs which have that specific hashtag in it. 
So this is a very specific way to put songs into dynamic playlists and not get them mixed up with other songs that shouldn't be there by putting a hashtag in front of the words. If I were to go back and redo Hey Ya Today, I would take this big long list of ridiculous songs and put hashtag Hey Ya in front of the really good ones that I would most likely play with that song. Go ahead, try this out for yourself, pause this video, and first pick a song that's kind of hard to play with other songs. Now, find two other songs that work really well with it and put a special hashtag in the comments sections of all three songs. Make this hashtag something unique. It might be the name of the song that's hard to play with, or it might be something that you associate the three with, like ooey gooey liquid playground. But whatever it is, it should be easy to remember and easy to type in quickly when you're in the heat of a set. Because when you're in the heat of playing, you're gonna go down and quickly type something, oh yeah, hashtag hey ya, uh, and it's gonna pull up all the songs that you would normally play with the song you're playing. Now let's take it up a notch. That's a great way to create dynamic playlists and quickly find songs to play with the song you're playing. But what about something more advanced? And this is where my hashtag concept got more evolved and turned into something I like to call vignettes. A vignette is a specific group of songs that play really well together. Think of it like a scene or a small little mini movie where these three or four songs could always be played together in an interesting way. It could be in one specific order, or it could just be that they go well together. Let me give you an example. Here, I've got a track that I love playing, which again, has a complicated style of swing. Now this song has an amazing swing, and it's 126 beats per minute, roughly. But here's the problem. If I were to try to mix any other 126 beat per minute song with this track, it would sound terrible because it has such a specific swing. And there's literally only four or five songs in my collection that would mix well with this track. So what did I do? I created a little vignette. In my case, I called it Goth Swing because that's something I could remember. And I found a song that would work really well with this track. And I put Goth Swing in that track too. Then I found another one that would also work well. And these three things might have similar keys. They might be in similar BPMs. I know that they could all work together really well interchangeably. You're probably starting to hear the commonality. It's this heavy sort of backbeat swing around 126 beats per minute. But here's where it gets really interesting. You'll notice that I added a little numbering system here. I love this numbering system because I can just sort by my comments and boom, the order of the songs are now laid out directly in front of me. Specifically, this song comes first, this song comes second, and then I play this song. For me, I can never remember, oh, what is that amazing song that I always play after this one? This system solves it, and it solves it beautifully. I use it all the time. In fact, if you look at this crate, Good Vignettes, I've got literally, I don't know, 30 or 40 vignettes that I love. In this case, let's take a listen to Goth Swing and see how it works. We've got a pretty steady beat here. Remember from my phrasing video, I'm gonna wait for the downbeat and start my mix at the beginning of the phrase, which is coming here. And indeed, these two work really well together. The swing matches, 
And if I do a good mix, you probably wouldn't even know where one song begins and the other ends. Maybe add a little bit of reverb and get out of here with a echo. And now I might be stuck. I'm like, oh, what do I play next? What do I play next? Fortunately, I've got number three ready to go. And these three work together beautifully. It's a great mix. And while I do not advocate planning out your entire sets, we can go into that in a later video, I really do advocate having some excellent little vignettes up your sleeve that work amazing every time. These shouldn't be five, six songs long. They should be three to four maximum. These are really useful for getting in and out of hard songs, songs that are difficult to mix and where you can't just completely wing it every time. As I pull up another vignette, in this case, a vignette that I've called Rave Trap, you'll notice that I've got some cue points here, in this case, flags set at very specific areas. And in next week's video, we're gonna talk about how you can use cue points, loops, and load markers in creative ways to set yourself up for success and make these vignettes really flow smoothly.